Hey guys, I'm Mel and today I'm going to do my October wrap up. I know it's a little bit early to do a wrap up. As NaNoWriMo is starting, I won't have that much time to talk about books. The first book I read is a Ned Galley book and that is The Love Song of Sawyer Bell by Avon Gale. This is about a band and about this girl in a band who is trying to find a new violin player or fiddle player. So they find a new girl and they go on tour together and they start a romance. As you can tell, this is an FF relationship and as you know, I'm a sucker for healthy relationships and communication and this book gave me that. What I really liked about this book is that the couple is together for most of the book. Also, one of the main characters in this book is bisexual and they talked about stereotypes and perceptions of bisexual people that really resonated with me. There were a few things I didn't like. There were references to girl sex as sex between two people with the vagina and that isn't always the case. Also there was this asexual character which is great but he didn't have anything like it felt like he didn't have his own personality but overall I really like this book then I read The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare it's about these two people who have a marriage of convenience between this duke and this seamstress and they get together and they fall in love during their marriage I really really wanted to like this more than I did I mean it's a gorgeous romance with an empowering couple and don't get me wrong there were a lot of things that I like. Firstly, the writing isn't the best. There were so many references to things being manly or masculine. There was a lot of classism. He doesn't like her working except for when she's working in things for him and that is never resolved in the book. Then I read Peluda by Melissa Lozada Oliva. This is a poetry collection and it talks about being Latina, it talks about being hairy because Peluda means hairy in Spanish. It talks a lot about family and friendships and love, femininity and intersections. I really like Melissa's poems. I've seen a few of her slam poems and this was incredibly thought-provoking which I appreciated a lot and I related a lot to the Latinx experiences. Then I read The Infamous Miss Rodriguez by Lidia San Andres. This is about Graciela who is trying to get away from this engagement that she's in. This is historical fiction by the way. It takes place in the Caribbean so her aunt puts this guy to follow her, make her not get into any trouble. This was a fantastic and adorable novella. The characters felt really real and unique. I thought the idea of setting a historical romance in the Caribbean was fantastic. Mostly character of color, a love interest who is Argentinian which is the second time that I've seen an Argentinian character on page. It was so intelligently written. And the tone of the book is hilarious, but it had sad moments and it had deep moments. Then I read The Ship of the Dead by Rick Riordan. This is the third book in the Magnus Chase series. This series is about the Norse gods and about the son of one of the Norse gods. I'm pretty sure this is my favorite Rick Riordan book to date. His ideas and his characters just get better and better with each book. This trilogy was so fun and diverse and I really really connected with all of the characters and their storylines. We also have a freaking genderqueer character who is so brilliant. Felt like Rick Riordan did his research and tried to write the most accurate representation of what being genderqueer is like. We also have a badass hijabi girl. Muslim people who did Ramadan during this big quest and kicked ass doing it. Then I read obviously my favorite book of the year that is World Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. This is about a group of girls who have tended the garden of La Pradera for the longest time, have this curse where they fall in love with someone and they start disappearing. Then out of nowhere this guy shows up in La Pradera and he doesn't know where he came from and he doesn't know why he's there or who he is. This was obviously, like I said, my favorite book of the year. It was so brilliantly told, which doesn't surprise me because Anna Marie McLemore just writes 
beautifully it's just every time that she describes something in a way that I haven't seen anything described like that before it paints the perfect picture in my mind of what's happening in this book it's very evocative and it's very descriptive it's very magical the magical realism really reminds me of Gabriel Garcia Marquez who is the ultimate magical realism writer who is like the creator of Latinx magical realism. I think her books should be studied, I think they should be in curriculums in schools. I just love having these bisexual girls and this diverse group of characters that are so well written. Then I read Meet Cute which is a collection of short stories about meet cutes. A lot of these stories made me think that I didn't really like meet cutes as much as I thought I did because a lot of meet cutes were really just insta love and people who saw each other and they knew that they were going to be together for the rest of their life. A lot of them were boring and just like not innovative at all. But then there were some that were fantastic that made me believe in fate and soulmates and romance and love and everything. What I liked the most about these stories is that they were very diverse. There were a lot of characters of color, there were a lot of LGBT plus stories. My favorite was Click by Catherine McKee and Something Real by Julie Murphy. I also really liked The Department of Dead Love by Nicola Yoon. Then I read Her Sweet Seduction by Sabrina Sol. This is about an author who actually wrote a book about a romance that she had when she was younger and he hasn't seen that guy for a long time but then she becomes really popular and this guy shows up at one of her signings and they start like kind of rekindling the relationship and yes yeah, so Abrina actually sent me this book I loved it like I, I love how she writes like she writes really adorable romances but that aren't just romances that are a lot of things outside of that that have very complex characters, that have well-rounded characters. We also have a Latina main character, evoked a lot of Latinx culture, and I just really adore this book. The only thing that I didn't like that much is that they started liking each other like as soon as they saw each other after 10 years of nothing happening even if their relationship wasn't that rushed the love and the feelings felt a little bit rushed but you know it was adorable finally i read before the devil breaks you by liba bray this is the third book in the diviner series this is set in the 20s and it's about a group of teenagers who have powers and who are trying to get through New York in one piece. For the first time I've heard an audiobook of The Diviners and it was so creepy, it was perfect for this time of year. I believe it's one of my favorites of the year. I just have a lot of feelings about this book. It was so diverse. There was an asexual character in this book which I didn't know we have. We have gay characters, we have black characters. We have. I think it was done beautifully. I think Liba Bray has such a way with words and with making atmosphere super creepy. It ended in such a cliffhanger and I can't wait to read the next book. That's everything for this month. Hope you liked this. If you did subscribe and I will see you when I see you. Bye!